that. And you guys know that I never talk about my personalized dosing strategy as a weight loss strategy, but I do believe that we should be still utilizing a slow and low personalized weight loss strategy with these peptides, no matter what. Like, I don't care how much weight somebody has to lose or whether they're using them for other reasons that we have data on. I think that we should go slow and low and just support the person. And I really do have concerns over the fact that if you crank up that dose to super high, you might drop a ton of weight and that's maybe that's what you need to be doing. But man, you're going to hit a wall. You're going to hit a wall. It's just like I would have patients who came in after decades of a particular hormone use and they were relying heavily on just the hormone itself, like as monotherapy, regardless of what hormone. And not doing everything in their efforts to optimize their metabolic health. And if you don't do all the things, you're going to have to keep cranking up the dose of whatever it is you use. And you're going to eventually hit the ceiling and there's going to be nowhere to go. And you just can't be cranking peptides at high doses and expect good things in the long run. You just can't do it. It's You're going to blow out your metabolism and you're going to end up with a more brittle, frail metabolism on the other side than you did when you started, which is really shooting yourself in the foot, especially if you're losing muscle mass along the way. So any kind of extreme abrupt weight loss, in my opinion, is a disaster. And it's particularly disastrous in those who are really in a pathologic state of type 2 diabetes, obesity, you know, really on the more severe end, those folks cannot do anything fast. We're not trying to slam people into the wall with a pharmaceutical. We're trying to nudge people towards homeostasis. That's an entirely different endeavor. I go through that in depth inside my GLP-1 Done Right University. We changed the name because we don't want to deal with any of the brand name mumbo jumbo because that's really not what it's about. It's about utilizing this peptide, not the brand names. And I go into this in depth and this course is for practitioners and it's for the general public. And the reason, well, I should say I let the general public in. It's not for them. It's geared towards practitioners. But I have found that in my following, I have a lot of really, really smart people. And let's just say (laughs) I know health coaches that are way smarter than many of the naturopathic doctors I know. So not to say that I don't know some really smarty pants NDs, but man, my profession as a whole like makes me wonder sometimes. So I want to make sure that everybody has the information that they need to navigate. And it's not just about GLP-1s. It's about the whole entire orchestra of players, of instruments that make up good metabolic health. And so I take you through all of that inside my program. And I just wrap it up in a GLP-1 bow because GLP-1s are this magic, amazing, like when done appropriately, they really, I think, are so magical as just an adjunctive wonderful tool inside the tool belt and they just sweeten the deal up. But there's an artistic way to do things and there's just a really blatant way to do things. And so I just tend to nudge slowly. I do that with everything I prescribe. I nudge slowly. I'm not a big fan of slamming people into the wall. You know, my mentor used to say, why are you trying to shoot a fly with a shotgun when you have a fly swatter? And that's a perfect analogy for naturopathic medicine versus allopathic medicine. So for all the haters out there in the allopathic world, I challenge you to be more artistic with your paintbrush. And for all the naturopaths who are still hating on me, which is super bizarre, like side note, I get screenshots of what's going down inside these naturopathic chat groups that kicked me out. They literally booted me during COVID and before because they didn't like me for whatever reason. And I'm like, what on earth did I do? I've never done anything but try to support this profession. Any of you who've been listening to me or found me on Diary of a CEO or anywhere else know that like I have done nothing but try to support this profession and the medicine that we represent. And not all the players, not all the players are my favorite, but inside these chat groups, as of late, I've been written up in several publications like the New York Times. And um, I had an article come out in the Epoch Times, which I actually declined. I, I asked them to remove my part because none of these publications will call us doctor anymore. We're all just being called whatever they want to call us. And some of them won't even credit me as naturopathic doctor or chiropractor. They just call me one, the New York Times called me a health influencer. Can you believe that? Tina, Moore, Miss Tina Moore, comma, health influencer. Like, how rude. The lady who wrote that article hasn't been alive as long as I've been in medicine. And I, you know, my half a million dollar in student loans, my license in Oregon to prescribe, my thousands of patients, the four inch needles I drop into patients' spines, and all of the thousands of prescriptions I've written in my lifetime beg to differ as to whether I'm a doctor or not. But the best part of this story that I know this is my little side rant. Um, 
a few people posted this in the naturopathic chat groups in the Facebook, on Facebook. And I never go in there. I mean, I'm banned from some of these groups for whatever reason, but I also don't go on Facebook because it's just like a cesspool of misery over there. And I kid you not, some of them were trying to make the point like, hey, we're, they're not calling us doctor anymore, you guys, which is a problem for all of us. Like all of us naturopathic doctors, any of you listening, this is a problem for all of us. They are not calling us doctor anymore, which means we are slowly being disappeared. They will only call MDs doctor. So what happens? It dissolves into them arguing over how, who hates me more. Like it literally dissolves into people arguing amongst themselves about how much they hate me. And I'm like, what a bizarro land that a group of people that I represent, that I go on some of the biggest podcasts in the world and talk about favorably how wonderful our medicine is, how many patients I've probably gotten these people who despise me. And they'll sit there and argue about details of my life they have no idea about. They just are speculating. And that's what they're worried about. They, they will literally cut their nose off to spite their face. And the real problem here is that we as a profession are being disappeared, but I will leave it at that. What a bizarre group of people. Um, you know, maybe if people weren't so busy worrying about what other people are or are not doing and focused more on doing awesome shit in the world and contributing to the world in a positive way beyond just their little clinical practice. Like if they actually put their necks out to get cut off like I do every single day, they might actually be more successful and happier people because I lead with purpose. I get up every day and I think, how can I be of service to humanity? How can I best help you guys be more informed? Because when you're informed, you're empowered. That's why I create courses. That's why I have all this free content. That's why I have how many episodes of my podcast? You know, how much free content do I, how many posts do I have on social media? How many YouTube videos have I put up? How many hundreds of thousands of dollars do I spend a year to pay teams of people to repurpose all this content and put it out there for you guys? I do it because I'm trying to save humanity from extinction. And some in my profession are so petty and broke and miserable that they want to argue amongst themselves. I don't know, maybe it's jealousy. I'd love to hear what you guys think. <laughs>